Hey, what's up, everyone? Here we are. This is the back nine of the Golf Clash Tommy Boss Battle. So, in case you guys missed it yesterday, they're giving you another replay. Um, and you can see very similar rewards. You can get uh, five balls for the Mojave, the five uh, amateur uh, balls as well that we're playing for. So, the goal here is to win this and you know they're putting this out every day for you guys it's just kind of like a promo event so hopefully you guys can take advantage of that um, you can get your playthroughs and you can win those uh free balls now one of the things that i just wanted to show you is kind of my bag set up here this is kind of the standard bag that we've been using um, this account itself has only been six games in so you see here 21 trophies we've only played six games so far so uh, very little has been played um, on this account. So if you're a very new player, this guide is kind of for you to kind of get you in the right mindset for playing this game. Um, and one of the things that I wanted to show you guys here is we'll be using this guide for ultimate golf. This is available for free in the Android store as well as the iOS store. It's going to give you detailed calculations for being able to work through a lot of these holes and really fine tune your game, get you close to the hole each and every time. So with that being said, let's pop in here and we will go back to the ultimate golf and here you'll see this is the guide for ultimate golf and we're just going to go ahead and get this set back up here. Come into the wind calculator. This is what we'll be using the wind calculator portion. Oops, how'd this happen? Wrong place. So, what we're gonna do here is pop into the back nine, start playing through. One of the things that I recommend, you know, for the, especially for this hole, definitely try not to overdo it. Um, we got a lot of tailwind here with that tailwind. Um, we're just going to try to focus on hopefully keeping it in play. A little early on my timing there. But as you can see, resting it perfectly in the fairway. And kind of perfect for our max raptor type shot here. So towards max, keep in mind it is going to check up very nice. This has been breaking out to the right on the green in the times that I played it. So we're going to set up according to that. Let's just say that looks pretty good. Um, you know, like I mentioned for this shot specifically, uh, since we're so close to the max line, it's going to have like some natural backspin to it. So with that in mind, we're going to set up just a little bit more aggressive than we would because it's going to kind of naturally check up with that backspin. So right around five rings, maybe just a hair more. So there you can see I pull more than the five rings. And then we're just going to let this shot pull out. Hopefully, we played it enough. Looks like we did, but it's just coming in just a tad bit hot. We did give that a good run, so that was a very good line that you guys can use. Keep, keep in mind that these are fixed wins. Everything that you guys are seeing here you guys are going to have the exact same wins. So with that in mind, I can use my shots with confidence. You can get them to the same spot, very similar shots. And even if you have different clubs, just, uh, you know, cycle through. And you could say, oh, you know, I have a big foot one. Um, and it'll just basically just switch you to different numbers. Um, the only thing that you'll want to be cautious of is whatever spins I'm using, you'll want to, you know, try to keep similar spins but also similar places in the club span so if you do get out of that uh, you know club span or more towards min more towards max it is going to change your shot a little bit um, but those are all factors that you just want to start considering and thinking about while you're playing through your rounds now what we're going to do here 
because we're just going to play this towards the left of the fairway. This outlaw club specifically, um, you know, it's, it's a very small ring adjustment, no matter what it is. It's about two rings. So I basically just eyeball it and just go two rings every time, two, two to three rings. You know, let's say it was like a 9.9, it's 2.77. So, you know, with that being said, you know, I'm just kind of naturally just speed adjusting a little bit with that. So a very difficult shot here. The way that I've been playing this is kind of right towards this. You can see we have the short iron. This is going to be pivotal that you hit perfect ball. Maybe a great left would be, you know, the only thing that would be acceptable. But look where we have to aim. And I did I played this wrong yesterday, so we're going to try to uh, we're going to try to make a little bit of a correction, and we're going to try to land somewhere around here. About three rings, it's showing. Three and a half, three, three point two. We're gonna go at least that much, just to, just for caution. See, of course, we have no room for curl. We do catch our ultimate shot. Keep in mind with uh, the basic ball on this is as, this is as much to the to the hole as we can get. So we're just kind of playing it short into the left here, and this is really the best that we can do. The goal here is to make this putt and keep going with our uh, solid round here. So as you can see, you have to be definitely cautious with your timing. So when you start to get long like that, be very careful with how you release. Putting on a special ball for that hole is definitely something recommended. That's probably one of the hardest holes on this entire setup is hole 11. Might be a, a perfect opportunity for you to waste one ball, um, just to be able to get some side spin, get it a little bit more closer to the right there, keeping it on the green closer to the hole. But the extra added bonus, bonus that you have is the fact that you can um, um, have a little bit extra precision on your putt as well. So the special balls in this game, when you use something other than basic ball, it gives you a little bit boost on your putting stat in most cases. What we're going to try to do here is land right on the front of the green. Side wind, as you can see. See, I got this outlaw as well, very close to the max line. So what we're going to do, as you can see, it says about 216 on the ring adjustment. So we'll go just beyond two rings. We'll come up here and we're gonna slight overpower kind of intentionally. Now why are we gonna do this? Cause we'd rather land on the green surface than on the uh, fairway. It's a little bit more consistent. Unfortunately, we hit a great ball. The great ball is definitely gonna pop it out. And you see, I still hit the fringe anyway, even trying to overpower. Um, had we hit the uh, ultimate shot there, we would have uh, been a little bit closer. You could feel free to use about two topspin there. So there you can see it was one and it's still a little bit short. Now why can you use topspin on your drivers on par threes? We talked about this um, on some of the other holes. It's because the tee boxes are so elevated. The greens are, you know, slightly soft as well. But the way that it works is when you shoot down to an elevated target, it checks up very rapidly. So you'll see that par threes in the game, when you hit drivers into them, they check up very quickly as a result of being so far uphill. So that's why you'll see that anomaly happening. Now what we're gonna do is we're just gonna get this one out into the fairway. Be a little bit cautious here. Um, you know, back off the overpower if you have to. Uh, you definitely wanna keep this one into the fairway. Um, especially with the headwind. So don't do too much. Keep this in play. Make sure that you can get this. In fact, this is a perfect example. We're going to have to do another short hit. So I've had to do this a couple times now. This is getting, you know, it's becoming a little bit of the norm. So what we're going to do, we've seen this shot um, executed in part of the other stream. So with that being said, we're going to do something very similar. We're going to set up right at the max the min line we're gonna do our uh, seven nine it's gonna give me it's gonna say right around five rings just a little bit light now same thing here we're gonna try to size this shot up so let's say bounce two is here let's say that it rolls out to here it's just kind of like an estimate so it's gonna we're kind of like about 10 rings long 
from the hole. Or maybe a little bit short of that. Maybe it's seven, six, six or seven. Six or seven rings. Like if you were to compare where the where the hole is and everything. Um, but what we're gonna do here is we're gonna pull up that 4.9. And then after we're gonna pull back down now keep in mind this this keeps in mind that we've already adjusted five rings down so and this is gonna land down here right around this fifth ring so what we might want to so the question becomes can we land on the front of this green or do we have to land on the fairway I don't really know the answer to this I'm gonna shift this just a little bit to the right I feel like it breaks to the left I can see some slope so if it's gonna break out to the left we're gonna just change my alignment just slightly. And what we're gonna do, another short hit. We're gonna land this on the fairway, roll it up. Ooh, it's not breaking out to the right, to the left. I should have just kept it. I can't I might have made it. So keep that in mind that you know looks can be deceiving, um, but also the way that the wind was pointed, it's kind of taking some natural wind effect, rolling out to the right. Um, I tried to use my uh, eyeball there vision to try to talk myself out of something I probably should have just left alone. <clears throat> but all in all there, pretty good shots, especially for needing the short hits and whatnot. Now what we're going to do here, you can see a pretty tight fairway. So we're not going to overdo this, not do anything cute, try to focus on your ultimate ball. Um, if you're not able to get the ultimate balls ultimate balls very uh, um, consistently you know even going up like to even like a loop ball um, definitely helps bring in a little bit extra precision for you so here you can see a little bit in between clubs thinking we're gonna wind up going to overpower so here you can see this is the wind directional we're going to be very close up to this max value maybe about three rings for max we're going to set up here because we're probably going to set up for overpower and imagine we're going to try to hit this kind of as hard as possible because it's going to check up really fast remember what i said about max club it puts like basically backspin on like natural backspin what we're going to do is we're just going to kind of over pull we're going to do some overpower maybe some curl back to the uh right hand side of course we're going to try to get her off of the shot and we're just going to try to play this slope which we did relatively good um maybe just the only thing i could have done to do that shot better would have would have been tap it out and use max on my uh, overpower because we had a good line we played the slope um, and all things considered pretty decent attempt there. now like i mentioned you know we're we're kind of striving for this 19 underscore um i mentioned that kind of at the beginning of the stream so we're coming up the uh par five we need to get one of these two par fives at least plus beat them in, in terms of um everything else so do we want to take the chance on this with the water and everything i think i'm just going to play this very safe i'm going to play this very cautiously keep this ball in play not do anything fancy not even overpower you're seeing i'm being very lazy with this shot and why am i doing that because i'd rather kind of take the chance on 18. we're going to put ourselves in a position um, that's probably the easiest par five on this setup and what we're going to do is, is we still might be able to get this hole. But the way that we're going to do it is just a little bit different. So we're going to try to keep this in play. And you can see as a result, I might not even use any spin, nothing fancy at all. So what we're going to do, let me just try to pull this back up. Sorry. My subscription service is, you know, a, a little bit different than everybody else's. So you'll see that I uh, kind of go in between the two and pop out because 
you know, I can only basically run my version in, in uh, test mode. What we're going to do here, getting back to this shot, is we're going to set up close to the mid-ish max value. And it's telling me about two, four rings, give or take. Keep in mind, we're keeping our spin off. And we're just going to... So I'm just going to kind of eyeball this. It doesn't have to be too too exact or anything. You just got to try to hit that ultimate shot. Get it. I'll put this mesh back on real fast. And here you can see we keep it in play right in the fairway. And who knows? We might be able to... So I played this a lot less um, aggressive today. Um, and the, the hopes is that we can still get this eagle. So I want to set you guys up for success versus being in the rough, giving yourself, um, you know, a little bit of a trouble. Now, one of the things that I'll do on stuff like this, so let's say this is 50% right here. Here, we'll call three quarters of the shot, maybe 75%. Maybe we'll even be just a little bit short of 75%. Just based on kind of eyeballing where we're going to be setting up can play complete to where that max value is and one of the things that we have here in this tool and that's why i'm mentioning this is we have a nice slider for these wedges we have a pretty nice wedge model built into this so as soon as you slide you'll see that it's kind of giving you a nice estimation so at 70 percent it's telling me about 2.7 rings and what you're gonna also see is that I keep the ball guide. Even though it's bounced two, I'm keeping it close to the hole. Reason being, I just know that it's naturally gonna check up very close with a headwind wet. With with a headwind wedge, it very aggressively is gonna kind of come to a halt. So we are gonna go at least two and a quarter, maybe just slight overplay. Two and three quarter ring. Got our alternates. Let's see how this comes in. Oh, just they're off. Look how look how much backspin that has. So you see how it just kind of really checks up and bites very quick. Because it's a wedge, it's because it's almost getting to. If it would have been at max, it would have checked up even faster than that. We would have to put the ball guide maybe into the hole. So keep all of those variables in play. Um, when I came over to this game, Wedge was the hardest club for me to master. Once I started to master it, that's when they started to drop, like I started making shots. Um, but to get to that point uh, was a lot of work and effort. Um, much more than most of the other clubs in the game. So one of the things that I'm doing is I'm just kind of sizing this up. You'll see we're kind of down towards min a bit. And of course, we're landing on the front of the green. Um, this has a lot of break to the right. So what we're going to do, factoring that in, is we're going to do this. We'll do the directional arrow. We'll put this down somewhat towards min, somewhat towards mid. And we'll just do about 4.8 on the ring adjustment. So this is in between mid and min, kind of closer to you know, the middle of both, but uh, we're also gonna play the natural slope. So that's what you'll see that I'm doing here, is we're going to land it left in the event and hope that it's gonna roll out significantly right. And sure enough, that's exactly what it does. We just kept the ball guide too short. We could've got a little bit more aggressive there. But use that as your guide and you can just make slight weeks on what I did. Keep in mind, you're going to have the exact same wind as me. The fact that your wind is the same tells you to, what to do to take advantage of the situation. Two holes left. You can see we've put our tiebreaker really in a good spot. Um, we will reflect on that once we get to the last hole. So let's just try to play this as flawless as we can. No mistake start to get a little, you know, weary about what you're going to do, especially this late in the game that you don't want to mess up, you know, definitely consider putting on a ball, special ball could, you know, be the difference. So this is the max line on the basic short iron. So 
what we're gonna do we go to the short iron um, I won't worry about that we're not gonna use any of that I'm just gonna use a uh, 3.5 number very close to max I keep in mind we're right at the max line with the max with that being said it's gonna check up faster than it would otherwise so what we're gonna do here is maybe just about that we're gonna make sure you know one of the things that I might do I was thinking about maybe just pushing up just slightly try to do that as straight as possible if you can keep it from short landing short on me Let's see how this rolls out. Went all pretty good. We didn't get too aggressive. We kept it uh, safe. You, know, you don't want to get too too close to that rough on that initial bounce. So, as you can see, kind of the way that it rolls out, you give yourself a very nice chance. And uh, this is kind of what I wanted to reflect on. We're 17 under through 17. All we need is 700 points to break his tiebreaker. So 700 points and an eagle. So two conditions we need to make here. So there's two ways that we can go about this. Um, because we went, we won these balls from yesterday. We won the Mojaves yesterday. We won the amateur trophies yesterday. So what we're going to try to do here is we're going to take the amateur trophies just to make sure we get the eagle. Since our club are in such infant stage, as you can see this amateur ball, it has minus 55 wind reduction, lots of power. So if the club was back here, look, it extends it all the way up to here and reduces that wind down to a three. So that's going to get us very long off the tee if we use it. Now, the alternative would be, let's say we go to Mojave. Ah, 5-6. It's only 5-6. With only a 5-6 wind, why don't we just do this? So 5-6, keep in mind, it's going to shorten your drive a little bit. You'll probably need to be very mindful of perfect ball with this outlaw. Try to get as close as you can to this ultimate shot. <clears throat> If you don't have this confidence, just use that uh, rookie trophy ball. You'll definitely get this eagle. So if you played yesterday and you got that rookie, um, you will easily get this eagle um, by using it. It, it. it will be kind of a formality. You can see even the way that I'm doing it here, there's, it's, that it's rolling out so far. You know, we got it out for 300 yards. This is a very short hole. Since we only needed 700 points, that's the reason. That's the only reason that I did what I was doing. Because here you can see, all we're going to do is land right on this front of this green, and maybe let this roll out. So again, the same um, component that we were talking about. When you um, have a drop shot like this, especially when it's going up into a hill, what we're going to do, we can utilize this top spin with without a lot of concern. Especially into the headwind, we're going to be pulling towards the max line. So you, it's just something you know you don't have to worry about. You can you can do um, without worrying that this is going to roll out too far. And keep in mind it's conditional to holes that are drop shots, though. Now what we're going to do is we're going to set up our wind directional arrow. We're going to say we're about close to the max line, two rings from it. We're going to input our wind. It's telling us to essentially adjust max. You can see even though we can, well, and we're also going to pull up from max as well. So 2.1 rings. Like I mentioned, feel free to keep that ball guide aggressive. I expect this to check up very rapidly. And I can't quite get to that two rings. So maybe I go just a hair over power. Something to the effect of this. Again, that ultimate shot. Uh, Timing, this is a perfect example. I was close enough. It's not going to play great ball. So you can see I hit a great ball, but it didn't play like, and I almost made that. Um, but you can see, you know, we got really aggressive. That's the, that's the effect of that Mojave ball. 
So this is a perfect example. You get to see the ball in action. It gives you extra putt precision. It gives you extra great ball timing. So what, what, what you saw is I hit a great ball, but it converted it to an ultimate shot because my timing was close enough. It added like a, uh, like a four, three or 4% window. I forget what the exact, we can go to that ball specifically and talk about that. But uh, let's just look at the standings here. You see, we won the rewards. We won the first place. Um, we have a excellent tiebreaker. Um, when we go back here, I wanted to talk about this ball situation. So we use this special ball here. It has plus seven, minus 25, 50 side spin, swing zone plus 3%. So as long as my release timing is within three seconds, let's just say, you know, you have to release at a specific time, it adds 3% extra window. So as long as I'm within 3% of that ultimate shot, it basically converts it to that ultimate shot. And that's exactly what happened. For putts, you can see it expands at 4%. Most that it can um, expand those is like 9%. So it's a considerable increase at 3%. 9% is almost unmissable. So, um, you know, with that in mind, you know, uh, definitely think about how to use these balls and utilize to your advantage. And if you think it's the difference, between you directly getting a stroke, always opt for the ball that's gonna give you that stroke. And that's a perfect example there, hole 18. We knew that if we use this ball, we will directly get that stroke. This is a perfect example in time to break out and start you know, thinking about, should I use an amateur ball? Should I use a Mojave? You know, should I go to the store, pick up, a, like if you look at these G-Force balls, plus 10% power, minus 81%, you could do some pretty deadly things with this. Here's this plus nine swing zone I was talking about. This is gonna make that perfect ball timing almost a guarantee. So a ball like this, it's almost gonna virtually guarantee that you get perfect ball. Uh, the ultimate shots. Even when it says great ball, you know, 90% chance, or if it's a one ring great ball, it's converting to a to an ultimate shot. Like that's how big of a window that that plus 9% gives you. As long as it's only one ring off, you'll essentially get a uh, ultimate shot every time. So do keep all that in mind. You know, they put out some really good balls, some really cool rewards. Um, you know, good luck with your rounds out there. Uh, in case you guys are new to this channel, um, the recent guides section at the very top of this ad uh, app here, it's just gonna start loading in all this new content. So here's my content from yesterday that I uploaded. You can already see it in this video. It's in the guide section at the top. Down here at the help, um, this is one of the easiest ways to learn about this game. So here you can see all the different features and a walkthrough tutorial of how to use all the features that is offered to you. Back here on the online, if we go to the YouTube, this is the easiest way to stay in contact with me. So here you can see my channel. Um, feel free to subscribe, keep up with the latest content, turn the notifications on. You know, if you do appreciate this video, you know, feel free to pass it along to others. Um, the goal here is to kind of get enough people shooting on this system to where, you know, you guys can share with your country clubs and you guys can have that confidence to go elevate your game and start moving on to those higher tours. So best of luck out there. Take care and see you guys next time.